Web scraping is a great method to get information from websites that do not have an API to give you that information. Most websites have an API, right? So for example, GitHub has an API that you can get user profiles and that stuff from. But not all websites do. And if they don't, even though you do need to be careful, because sometimes it is against terms of service, especially if the content you're scraping is hidden behind an authentication or even worse, a paywall, you need to pay attention. But if a website doesn't have an API, web scraping can be really useful. Let's take a look at the most simple form of web scraping, which is literally just with the JavaScript fetch API. It's really intuitive and lots of fun. So I say we dive right in. Okay, so here we are inside of a Next.js project. And uh, to show you what this project currently looks like, we're going into the browser and it's literally just an input field and a big button. And I wonder what this button does. Um, and to show you what it does, let's go to M, uh, npm. And let's type in some random package. In this case, we can just say puppeteer. That is a very famous um, npm package for web scraping, as you can see, we're not going to use that in this video, we're just going to be using this as an example. And to learn web scraping, let's say we want to enter the package name right here. So for example, puppeteer. And then what we want to get is the amount of downloads this package has. So this value right here. And let's just assume that npm does not have an API where we can get that data from. Now, many services, web services have an API that allows you to get this data, but if they don't, that is where web scraping comes in. Essentially, web scraping allows you to go to a website and get whatever information you want. And uh, let's just get started. So inside of the project um, on the button, we want something to happen, right? When we click the big go button right here, what should happen? Well, the first step, uh, we want a function to get called. So we're doing this step by step. So let's call it get uh, downloads this function downloads it's going to be an arrow function and whenever this button right here gets clicked we want this function up here to happen and let me disable github copilot for a second okay so this function will be run whenever we click this big button right here now what what do we want this function to do well we want to fetch the downloads and i think the best way to actually fetch the downloads is to go into our api route so pages api instead of next.js let's create a new route called get downloads .ts. let's just call it tsx because we might be working with some jsx um this this get downloads is just a constant so const get downloads we are just initializing a new next.js api route pretty simple stuff we're going to export that as default, get downloads, and uh, the arrows are going to be gone. And now inside of this get downloads, what do we want to happen? First off, we want to make this async. So we can, in the first step, say cons response is equal to await fetch. And then what do we want to fetch? Well, from the server, what are we doing right now? Because this is server side code, remember? From the server, what we want to do is navigate to this page right here as the first step. So we can actually get the amount of downloads that we have, right? So we're gonna copy this URL right here and we want to fetch this URL. However, we do not just want to fetch puppeteer, but we want to fetch, um, you know, whatever we want to type in here. But that's what we're gonna do later. Right now, let's just focus on puppeteer. And whenever we navigate it to this page, we want all the HTML that is on the page, right? And to do that, we can say const HTML is equal to response.text. Now this is also asynchronous, uh, else we would have a promise right here if we didn't have the wait, the wait, check this out. So we're being promised a string. That's why we need to wait this. It's just like the uh, JSON pretty much. And that is essentially a very long HTML string. So let's log it out to the console and just uh, return an empty string to the front end for now. And from the front end, whenever we click the go button, we want to um, fetch this API route. So this is going to be HTTP double slash local host 3000 slash API slash get downloads. And uh, let's save all of those files and click the big button and see what happens right here in the browser co uh, in the uh, console. We're going to click the button. And wow, that is a very long string that is being drawn to the console here. Doesn't even fit inside of the, um, the VS Code 
console, but that's fine. Uh, as you can see here, it's the end of an HTML. So essentially, we're just getting a really long HTML string right here, which is exactly what we want, because from this HTML string, we can actually get the values that we uh, want to get. Now, to get the values out of there, there are a couple of ways. There are libraries, for example, Cheerio, which is just like a jQuery for a working uh, server side, pretty much. What we're going to use is uh, another library called JS DOM. So we can stop the server for a second, say npm install JS DOM. Let me show you that package while it installs and um, JS DOM npm. It's this package right here. It's got a bunch of downloads as well, like uh, 20 million. So it's a very famous library to do what we're doing right now. Um, we can start the server back up, yarn dev. And now in here, we can uh, import JS DOM. Let's say import JS DOM from JS DOM. And as you can see, this is a huge dependency, like 2.5M gzipped even uh, 602K. So it's a large dependency. Um, but that's fine because we're importing it server side. It, it doesn't really matter. And uh, essentially what it allows us to do is turn this string we get from right here into an actual DOM object that we can work with on the server side. Because on the server side, we don't have access to things like query selector. And this essentially models the client side on the server side. So it's a kind of inception. So we can say, uh, let's say const, and I think GitHub Copilot might actually be helpful here. Um, const DOM is equal to a new JS DOM, which we pass the HTML string. And then the document is equal to the dom.window.document. And this document now we can work with just like anything else. We can say something like a document.query selector, um, for example, with the dot download. So we have the class name and then like the, the dot for the class name and then the actual class name. So we can simulate working just like a real client site. Now we don't want the downloads. Instead, we can go right here, inspect this, and then see what exactly we want. So in this case, this class is called um, a bunch of stuff. So it looks like Tailwind, but we have this identifier. And this looks like to be a unique identifier, which specific to the MPM site, all of these um, elements on the DOM have. So we can just copy that and use that right here. So essentially we're saying navigate to this page with a fetch, get me all the HTML, and then we are parsing that as a DOM and then selecting this specific class right here. And uh, now to get what is inside of here, we can say text content. So this would be the actual um, element and we want whatever is inside of it. So this value right here, the 3.8 million. So that's why we say um, text content. And now we can say console log downloads and say downloads right here. And let's take a look at what happens. So let's open the console, navigate to our, oops, right here, click the big go button. And as we can see here, really nice. I didn't mess anything up. We have the downloads 3.8 million. Now we can see here API resolved without sending a response. Now that is not optimal. We can say uh, send downloads back to client. In Next.js, we can get the request up here. So next API, rec uh, no, not that. Next API request. And then we also get the response, which is a next API response. And why is this giving us an error? And we need to import this now. Okay, now the naming is not ideal. Let's call this response and then await response.text. Now the naming uh, is all right. And now when we want to set the send the downloads back, we can say rest.status200 because the request is fine. So JSON and just pass back the downloads. Now to receive the downloads here, we can say const rest is equal to await fetch. And then we are going to turn the downloads um, or we're going to destructure the downloads from the uh, JSON and then say downloads downloads on the client side. So let's see if the server to client side communication works. Uh, ideally, we should see the downloads in the console and we do. So as you can see here, we have 3.8 million. Perfect. That is exactly what we want. And now we can, uh, for example, keep the downloads in state, say downloads set downloads that is equal to a 
well, it could be a number or a string. We're going to leave it as a string for now because that's what we uh, get it back as, as a string. Um, so we can import the state, uh, remove this, and then set downloads to downloads. Now we have the downloads in here. And uh, where do we want to display them? Well, we could display them below the button right here. Have a P that says, uh, well, that's a text small and text black. And say this package has downloads. Downloads. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Reload the page. And well, it doesn't really make sense to show the P when there are no downloads. So we can conditionally render this. Um, reload the page and say go. And now we can see this package has 3.8 million downloads. Nice, okay. What we can also do is uh, now implement the functionality where we can type in the package, right? So um, we are keeping that in the input right here. We wanna keep that in state as well. So it's a controlled input that's gonna be a string, an empty string to be initialized. The input is gonna be controlled. So value is gonna be input. And then the on change is gonna be set input to either target.value. So we always have the current input in here. And now to the fetch, we're gonna make a post request. So method post. And instead of the body um, right here, I'm not uh, too familiar with a fetch, but uh, yeah, we're gonna put a json.stringify. Usually I don't work with fetch a lot. Usually there are some ab abstractions that make working full stack in Next.js easier. Um, for example, trpc. But uh, in this instance, we're gonna work with the um, regular fetch. So we are passing the input as the body. And then in here we can say receive the input from the request body and we can just destructure that and let's log out uh, the input for uh, for a second so input input just to verify that we did the communication between client and um, server correctly so let's say hello world and now in the console ideally we should see okay we're seeing input undefined so why is that we have the json.stringify, so uh, we might need to parse that. Parse from json. So let's just remove this and say uh, cons body. I've got some tips here open on the left side. Is equal to json.parse. Um, yeah, and now we can say cons input is equal to body and now that should work. Uh, let's try that again, hello world. Now the input is hello world, great. Um, and now with the input, we can put that right here instead of puppeteer. So we are not always fetching for puppeteer, but actually for whatever we typed in. And then, wait, what did I do? Okay, there we go. And now we are dynamically fetching whatever we typed in here. Um, I hope that this class will stay the same. I didn't check beforehand. I really hope it does. Uh, if it doesn't, this might not work. And that's one of the drawbacks of um, fetching you know, uh, of web scraping if you don't have an API because you ne need to rely on these names staying the same, right? But uh, let's just try out if it works. So we're making the fetch request and now let's go back to the browser and go, for example, JS DOM, type that in here, go. And now we can see, okay, this does work. So this package has two, uh, 20,421,781 downloads. If we go to Puppeteer, we can just, uh, copy the name, click go, and okay, so this does not ignore uppercase yet. That would be a very easy fix. You would just uh, say um, input dot to, low, to lowercase right here, and that would uh, just fix everything. So we could also have uppercase. Um, the, the number wouldn't change. Now, what's a package that we could um, go for? Random npm package. Uh, okay, let's just uh, let's just go for random. So it should be 30, uh, 36,000 downloads. Paste it in here. And there is a space right here. That's probably why it doesn't work. Um, okay, and now we have 36,000 36, and 24 downloads. Exactly what we have right here. So I think this is the easiest way to do web scraping. Now, are there better ways? Yes, definitely. Um, I don't think doing fetch is the best way, but I think it's the easiest way to get started with web fetching. 
um, a web scraping. That's what I mean. That's how I got started. I think it's the most intuitive because as a web developer, chances are you've been working with the fetch API like anyways. And uh, so it is very intuitive to just use it to fetch the um, HTML of a page that we're doing right here, um, getting the HTML and then parsing it as a DOM. Now you could also do this client side, by the way, like uh, I prefer to do it server side, but you could also handle this whole stuff client side. Um, but then you rely on the computing power of the client, which is not always the best. Um, that's why I do it server side. But yeah, those are the basics of um, data, like web scraping. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.